All right, so I'm Beth Tyree, and I'm going to talk about the supply chain simulation that we put together for Fruit of Loom. I worked on this project as an intermediate software developer in the company, and um, this was one of the first types of uh, supply chain simulations, international supply chain simulation that we worked on as a company, but we've been using AnyLogic for a while, especially with discrete simulations. So my talk, I'm going to go in, set up the problem, why we wanted to look into this agent-based simulation, why we chose agent-based modeling, and why we chose AnyLogic for this project. I'll set up the model a bit, give you all a demo, go into some of the code behind the model, and then go into some conclusions. So first, let's talk about Fruit Loom as a company and, and how we're kind of aligned. So we are a Berkshire Hathaway company. We have products all the way from underwear that we're, that we're typically known for, to activewear, to sports apparel, to inflatables, and sports equipment. So we're made up of four business units, and we're a very SKU-intensive company. As you can imagine, with all the different products out there, we have several different categories of products, and we're retailer-intensive, so we have many different retailers that we interact with, all the way from your Walmarts and Targets to your distributors. And for this project, I worked with the transportation team because they were looking at adding a new distribution center or redistributing products along our supply chain to see if they could uh, have more efficient shipping costs, reduce their shipping costs throughout the supply chain. And for this project particularly, we were looking at a category that was um, more of a uh, that we sell in mass quantities to distributors. So that means that they actually come out of RDCs, their products come out in truckloads or LTL shipments or rail, so no small package shipping was involved in this. So simulation modeling importance. So as a company of Fruit Loom, we can't actually go out and build a new DC and then experiment on it. We have to figure out ways of testing new locations that the transportation team or leadership may want to look into and investigate further. And that's what simulation really helps us with. And then it enables abstraction. So we can really get out the relevant details of the supply chain. Supply chains, as you all know, are very, very complex systems. So we can focus on the relevant details, estimate those, and then let our uh, different business partners really know about our assumptions. So we chose AnyLogic. Again, in the company, we have this software because it is so flexible across all sorts of different simulations, from discrete event modeling to agent-based modeling to systems dynamics. But for me as a software developer, that was my background. I really enjoyed AnyLogic because I could go in, I could drag and drop different features, but then I could really customize the, the model to our supply chain and really put in different interactions that may not come in an out-of-the-box solution. So supply chain agent-based modeling, we fit the perfect description of uh, a supply chain and agent-based modeling. We have producers, processors, companies such as distribution centers, wholesalers, retailers, and each of those different agents in our system have their own goals, but they interact together in this ecosystem. So agent-based modeling was perfect for us in this simulation. Data collection. So we, it really required quite a bit of data from our transportation teams and other teams across the company that I'll go into later. But we first really wanted to look into the customer shipment data. So we focused on high demand customers for this particular category, which actually made up 85% of shipments. And we looked into their total shipments, all of their different orders per year in total units. And then again, their shipment types were just truckload, LTL, and rail. We then needed to use GIS to look into the original distance of the DC to the customers. And we also had to have overhead cost estimates to really understand what it actually costs to build a new DC. What are the fixed variable costs about um, operating in a new DC in terms of keeping the lights on, having all the people um, to purpose that DC, and then the, what it costs to make the product. 
So all of that were all of those were different inputs that we put into the enneologic simulation. It was a collaborative effort. So for me, coming from more of a science background and coming into industry as a software developer at first, I really needed to understand how a supply chain interacted. And there were many people I had to meet with, understand their data, and collect it to be able to put this model together. So we also used some exploratory techniques to look at the different types of data. And for this instance, Tableau was a great resource for us to go in and find different outliers. So you can see this one customer um, really, really had a lot of shipments in a particular time period and then went down. But all the other customers were, were kind of stable throughout those different historical periods that we looked at. And GIS, so this was what um, my background was in, geographic information systems, looking into geographically referenced data and how that can be spatially visualized and analyzed. So we use GIS at Free Loom not only for logistics, but we look into sales opportunities, streamlining of operations. And for this example, it is a supply chain logistics example. So as you can see, we can look at routing that we're currently doing throughout uh, the supply chain and how you can use GIS to layer this data together from your consumers to your distribution centers to the different um, roads in the United States and really create efficient routes from that. So at first, I wanted to actually get the particular distance from the DC to the customers by road driving distance. And I used a tool called ArcGIS for this. So you just literally place the distribution center that you have, all your customers, and find the distance from all of those different locations. And then I actually, before I went to the simulation, I wanted to see what the most optimal location of a distribution center would be based upon customers weighted by their number of shipments per year and the distance um, from the location. So with this type of analysis, it's called location allocation. I can put in all of the potential distribution centers, which would be located in, which in this case were any US city over 10,000 population, put all of those in, it calculates the distance from each of those cities to the customers, weights them based upon shipments, and determines the most optimal location. So in this case, we uh, are using mock data, but the chosen location for this facility would be in McCook, Nebraska, based upon all those parameters I just talked about. So then let's get into the actual model and what's, what's going on there. So we really wanted to not have to go in and put all the different orders of a customer in there. We wanted to look at the percentage of shipments per customer, or the shipments the customer received per year, and the man in those demands of those shipments. So we just looked at the demand last year, but as I'm in the data science world now, I'd really like to, in the future, put advanced analytics around this to really predict the demand of the customer in the future and add that capability into the model. And then model assumptions. So this version of the model that I'll be speaking about was put into AnyLogic 6. It's been transformed into AnyLogic 7 for this demonstration. But we primarily use latitude and longitude calculations using the Haversine formula, formula, which is used by NOAA and NASA, so as the crow fly distances for new distribution centers to calculate the distance of a new distribution center that's placed in the model to the different customers. And then, again, the small package, we didn't have to worry about that, and approximately 85% of shipments were modeled. So here are the different agents. So we had our distribution centers, which we had their location, the number of units that they would service, overhead cost, if it was a new DC that we added to the model, and the startup cost. And then the customers, so we had their location, demand rate, total shipments, distance, freight rate, which was actually a parameter that was given to us by the transportation department based upon different states and what their freight rate would be to ship from a certain DC shipment type. And then we had our trucks and our trains. The trucks had their location, number of units that was on that truck, 
the owner, which would be their, dest uh, their distribution center, and the destination. All right, so let's get into the demo, and you'll kind of see everything that I've been talking about. So this scenario is just having the original DC with uh, the customers and outlier customers presented, and we're going to test out the Haversine formula. So here's the user interface. It's very simple. The user can put in the different units and shipments per year. There are advanced options that I don't have, that I don't show in this just for proprietary reasons. And then they're able to select if they want to start with the original DC, start with the outliers, and then now we're going to run the model. So as you can see here, are all the customers that are um, in the model, the distribution center, the original one, you can look at the different categories of products that the DC is shipping, their estimate of shipping cost, and for this one, we shouldn't see a reduction in shipping costs. And for this model, um, we would usually have the startup cost associated with that distribution center if it's new, and the operating cost. So I'll let that go. All right. So. Again, 0% distribution or cost reduction, which we assume since that is the original DC. Now we're going to test out the Haversine formula. So we're going to not start with the original distribution center. It will be on there as an aid for us, but we're going to replace it with a new distribution center before the model begins. So all we have to do is click on that place. It's going to create a new distribution center, and we're going to see how much that difference in cost reduction. It shouldn't be a very big difference in the cost reduction if this error is appropriate. So as you can see, I think it's about a five to 6,000 cost difference. So for this, in our model, we were okay with using the Haversine formula and the error associated with it. So now we'll go into our scenario two. This will be the original DC with rerouting to our already existing distribution centers, distribution center one and distribution center two. So there's a really easy way for the user to click on where they want to reroute their products to. As you can see, we have an East Coast and a West Coast distribution center for this demonstration. And let's see what our cost reduction is. And you can see that those that overhead cost would be applied, the startup cost would be applied to those new distribution centers. And you can see, I think it was about a 42% cost reduction for that, that scenario. So now we'll go into scenario three. This is the original DC with the new DC in the optimal GIS location in Nebraska that the GIS system found. So for this part of the analysis, the user actually knows that particular latitude and longitude coordinate. So they're able to just really easily type that into the system to create that new DC before the model begins. All right, so it's been added to McCook, Nebraska. And we're going to go ahead and begin this model to see the cost reduction associated with adding this new DC. So it's about a, I believe, 32% cost reduction just by adding that new DC. So something definitely to think about in um, determining if the teams would determine if that was feasible or not. And you can also look at the different units that that distribution center shipped. So for our final distribute or our final scenario, we're going to look into our original DC. We'll reroute products from our already existing DC, and we'll add an optimal GIS location. We'll also put all, export all of the simulation results into an Excel file, which our users are most comfortable with.
and it's very easy for them. They just have to upload a blank Excel file for this to work. So now we've added the McCook, Nebraska DC just by clicking on the map itself. We have our original DC and we're gonna start the model. So I believe this one was about a 40% cost reduction um, into the supply chain. And then all the user has to do is generate their report after the model runs. All right. And then they'll get this results Excel file, which actually highlights um, the latitude and longitude coordinates of any DCs that they added, the overhead costs and startup costs associated with those DCs, units shipped, the different categories of products that they shipped, percentage of shipments, and then leading to the shipping cost and total cost reduction and when shipments were fulfilled. So let's look into the code behind this simulation. So first of all, we have our action charts, which are very easy to create because you can just upload an Excel file, which I did in this case, and go in and parse the data in a way that each agent can have all of the different parameters associated with it. There were multiple different charts that were used, including state charts, but I just wanted to highlight this one that really kicks off uh, the model. So some of the Java code behind the simulations, what was really the heartbeat of this simulation was the daily shipment event. So each distribution center, or the original one that we were working with, they have a particular number of shipments that they can uh, put out of that DC. And this goes in and actually finds a randomized customer, looks in to see if they are, their demand has been reached or not, and if it hasn't, it assigns it a new distribution center or a distribution center based upon the distance that customer is between the distribution center. So I'll go into that code now. Um, the calculate DC with the shortest distance to customer. So it goes in and services any of those customers that have the shortest DC or shortest distance to that DC. And then the create new, new DC function was really, really great um, that any logic had that capability where the user could just click on that GIS map, get the latitude and longitude coordinates of that location, and be able to have those overheads and startup costs associated with that. Now we extended this model, so that was more mainly looking at our domestic supply chain. We wanted to look at our international supply chain because in our company we have um, multiple different ocean rates that are associated with shipping costs that we wanted to account for. So for this agent-based model, the manufacturer's 2 DCs, it was very paramount that we had this in the whole demonstration. So you can see we have our manufacturers, distribution centers, loading ports now, ports of discharge. Now we have different vessels with ocean rates and trucks associated with that. So now you really can see that we can put the whole international supply chain in there and determine the most optimal location of a distribution center based upon all of this information. So some of the conclusions. So for our, for our company, it was really, really great to have this exploratory research tool for the business where they could investigate and play with different selections into their distribution centers to really aid them in determining if these are feasible or they actually would go in and take that exploratory research and determine if it's feasible or not. They know a lot more about building a new distribution center, all of the taxes and rates that are involved in that, and they can really figure out if our recommendations, again, are feasible. And then the data-driven insights from both GIS and Enealogic paired with business knowledge really creates a full-fledged approach to developing informed supply chain decisions. So sometimes in industry you may have decisions that are made upon people's expertise without really diving into the data and looking into it. So this creates an unbiased approach for the business to pair with their knowledge to see if these recommendations are feasible. And in this case, we, we were able to give them a lot of evidence to suggest a location that would be really optimal in terms of, again, their 
um, manufacturing supply chain and their customer supply chain. And you can see that they've been able to expand that and we're really excited to see the results of that. All right, and thank you so much for this opportunity and I'll open the floor to questions. Thanks. Um, I appreciate seeing the uh, video demonstration. I mean, it's definitely helpful. You talked about using the ArcGIS tools to help optimize the location. Is there any reason why you didn't actually use any logic to help optimize the location of the distribution center? Sure. So any logic, they have the new features in there to really account for routing, which we're really excited to place in this simulation. At this time, again, we went from any logic six to seven. So that's kind of our future in the simulation is adding that capability into the model. Thank you. Uh, for scenario number two, uh, where you have uh, multiple DCs, what was the decision uh, criteria for those different DC volume, dis volume distribution, uh, truck utilization, proximity? So really proximity and then volume distribution were the main, um, the main reasons we looked into the distribution center. We know the capacity that they a new DC could have or the capacity we wanted it to have. And um, we also had, you could also use the model to determine how many shipments that DC could actually um, facilitate to the customers. Were you limited in the number of distribution centers you, should, you could choose from? Because when I look at the model, my first thought in terms of optimization would be to use a network optimization type of tool. But uh, when I saw your GIS, I only saw one location, and you said you were adding a location, but I figured I'd see more than one location on GIS. So yeah. what's, what's happening? Sure, so um, with this simulation, the user, really, the transportation department could decide how many DCs they wanted to have in the model. For this, we really wanted to focus on rerouting products if we could. Um, in the end, you could see how they expanded one of our DCs, our current DCs. But in the GIS simulation, uh, or the, the ArcGIS location allocation, algorithm, it only picks one DC. You could probably have it pick two DCs, but it really just looks at the one DC based upon the different weighted shipments to those customers and the distance to the customers from that DC. You do know you have an optimized solution with what you were able to model? Yes, so there is definitely an optimized solution from the GIS, but a lot of the other um, transportation department and other teams wanted to, they knew particular locations that they were very interested in investigating for a new DC, so they could use the AnyLogic model to really go in and see if those locations would be optimal or not. Thank you. I have more question related to speed of the software run. So when we increase number of uh, distributors, let's say to 50, 100, and if you have 100, 200 customers, and if you have like 10 different types of products, I don't know whether we would have an issue with running time, or did you have any issue for these instances, like in terms of running, when you click on the button, did you have any issue with software running? So some of the... Um I would say the high demand customers. So for this particular category, there were a lot of different customers. And we focused on high demand customers, which was in the thousands, to simulate based upon kind of the runtime. And then you, we know that some of those customers, those low demand customers, may just be ordering one time. So it just made more sense for us to look into that. And um, looking into other distribution centers, adding those into the model, I've added up to 10, and it was completely fine with that. And I have another question. I, we saw that you also integrated with maritime transportation system. And I know that in terms of uh, highways, it's, you can connect automatically. Did you draw all these routes by hand mm -hmm. to send ships from the source node to the uh, uh, demand node? And how many routes do you have, and how hard it is to define all these uh, routes or routes if you did it manually? Sure. So the great thing about GIS data is that 
there's a plethora of data out there, and I believe um, one of the Maritime Institutes has all the different shipping routes of the world. So first, what I did was look into the GIS system. We have you know a limited number of shipping routes that we can handle, so we actually know knew those distances that we could programmatically put into any logic and find those. And then the great thing about ocean rates, usually they're more of a flat rate. So we were able to incorporate that into the model. And again, the distances were all known for those shipping routes. Thanks for the presentation. How much time was spent uh, gathering the data versus actually doing the modeling? Oh, yes. So um, understanding the data, gathering the data, and, and taking a scientist into industry it probably took me about um, just by myself maybe a month to really, and I was working on other development projects as well, but meeting with all those different teams and really understanding the problem um, took a large amount of time and then actually programming it um, using any logic, this flexible tool, it was really, really helpful and didn't take a lot of time to put the model together in the end. So overall, how much time did this whole project take from gathering the data to actually uh, building the model and you know uh, providing the output. Sure. So I would say with all the other projects going on, um, just me by myself, probably two to three months. Hey, um, great presentation. Thank you. Uh, did you model the returns as well as the shipping, and how did that go? Yes. So um, for we we didn't actually returns of the customers, um, but just one thing to note for ocean freight, uh, when you have that from the actual uh, discharge port to the facility, you have to pay for the empty container coming back. Um, and that is really a big thing that you could see in the model when we paired them all together is what that fee is going to cost um, if you don't have a discharge port near a distribution center. And if you notice, um, in the end, that expansion to a DC was actually around a port, um, really close to a port. Thank <laughs> you.